This is the On the Pony Express podcast. Part of the On3 network. Check out all the SMU coverage you need at ontheponyexpress.com. Now, now. here's your host, Billy Embody. Billy Embody. One, two, three. Ready, we go. to another edition of the On the Pony Express podcast. I am Billy Embody, back from my little hiatus of podcasts and spending time with my newborn, my wife, Michelle, and I welcome Jack Ryder Embody on March 30th into the world. So we are thrilled, loving life as parents, um, but I'm very happy also to be back doing the podcast with all of you guys who follow us at OnThePonyExpress.com. And of course, we are presented by our friends at Status Jet. Nice to say that once again. And our friends at Status Jet can help you guys elevate your game day with Status Jet. That's where luxury meets the sky. Tailor your journey to the next SMU away game with unparalleled elegance. Call up David Henry and his team. They will guide you through the entire process. They're more than capable of getting you from point A to point B with that incredible amount of attention to detail that you'd expect from a private jet charter company. Call them 866-404-9314. You can go to statusjet.com. And when you talk with them about a round trip flight, mention on the Pony Express or the code PONYUPACC for a discount on that round trip flight. Again, we're going to have a lot of opportunities for you guys to see what Status Jet can do for you, whether it's your road games, whether it's your trips uh, for for spring break or the Masters just happened. A lot of people use Status Jet for things like that. And the summer is approaching, so more opportunities to travel are there. So again, think of our our friends at Status Jet and reach out to them for more information. They're proud supporters of SMU Athletics and the On the Pony Express podcast. Well, lots happened uh, since our last podcast, and uh, the last podcast we ran was uh, Cody Belair breaking down the rankings and and talking about the SMU commitments that they have, some targets that are out there for the Mustangs as well. But SMU has also hired a basketball coach. The transfer portal window for basketball basketball has begun. The transfer transfer, transfer portal window for football starts Tuesday. And the rest of rest of spring practice has come and gone for SMU football. So where do we start? Where do we begin? Well, I wanted to share with you guys the plan for this week. My plan is to go for five, five for five. Five days during the week, five podcasts. We've got content at OnThePonyExpress.com with Jordan Hoffaditz, Kevin Longquist, myself, bringing you guys recruiting team updates, and more. And if you've been on the site for the basketball side of things since the hiring of Andy Enfield, I can tell you we're the only ones giving you guys the recruiting and transfer scoop on that. So again, subscribe for just a dollar. Use code SMU1, that's SMU the number one, at ontheponyexpress.com to get that information on how the staff is building out that roster. But we have all of these different avenues uh, that I could go for the first podcast. But with the transfer portal window opening for football on Tuesday, I'm opting to go that route. We can talk later in the week about the spring football that we saw and what happened and where things stand entering the offseason now for SMU football. We can talk about SMU basketball later this week as well in the transfer portal and recruiting and also my full reaction to Andy Enfield getting the job, uh, which came together right really as uh, Jack Ryder was making his appearance. and. We can do all of that later this week, but with the portal window opening on Tuesday, I wanted to go ahead and talk to you guys about where things stand with the football team in terms of roster building, in terms of transfers that are going out, transfers that may be coming in. SMU is going to be active once again in the transfer portal. And so let's start with transfers leaving the program. And if you guys follow us at OnThePonyExpress.com, we did drop a roster note. Uh, in terms of SMU losing a, uh, or I say losing, a player moving on. That will probably happen in all likelihood when the transfer portal window formally opens. So that will go public. Uh, We posted that either uh, last week. The days kind of run together. Last week or or, um, over the weekend. But two players did announce 
intentions to enter the portal. One being Jaden Jones, an edge rusher for SMU that, quite honestly, over the last couple of years has just been injured. Hasn't been able to see the field as often as he wanted to. He's battled through injuries to play in 20 games over the last few years. So it's not like he's been completely on uh, the sidelines, but he's just battled numerous injuries. I think he's missed the last two springs recovering from injuries, but he is going to move on now with two years of eligibility remaining. He redshirted in 2021. He was a Dallas Parish Episcopal kid, uh, same high school as Preston Stone, that really when you looked at his athletic profile, a lot of people, uh, including myself, thought, hey, this is what you look for. When you recruit kids from TAPS, you want them to be very good athletes. You want them to be those type of athletes where their skills can translate to the next level. And unfortunately for Jaden, he's been nicked up. He's had to add a bunch of weight to kind of play defensive end, little edge, some bandit in Scott Simon's defense. But at the end of the day, when you have guys like David Abiara, Cam Robertson, Jalen Samuels, Isaiah Smith, and now Omari A. Bohr coming in, Braden Flowers in the mix. I mean, all those guys play either bandit um, or the um, – you know, strong side defensive end spot. And that's not to mention Elijah Robertson, Jafar I. Harvey as well. So lots of competition at the, at those two spots, which is pretty much where Jaden's bounced back and forth. So he's going to move on. He's going to find a new opportunity. He's a great kid, really enjoyed his time at SMU. While he was recovering from injury this spring, he was out there at spring practice watching. So he was very much with the team and uh, is uh, now going to move on. And then you have the news kind of of the day, which for the casual fan, you would look at and say, wow, Brian Massey, veteran with one year remaining, he's going to transfer as a grad transfer and enter his name in the portal. He's going to do that, and or he has done that. He is in the portal now, and he's looking for his last stop. And again, you look at a position where there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of talent. You have Jonathan McGill, Ahmad Moses, Isaiah Wachovia, not to mention Kyron Chambers, Abdul Muhammad had a good spring game. And you bring in two safeties and Jalen Moses and Kadavian Dodson Walker, and also Brandon Crosley and CJ Sanders, who play the nickel. There's a lot of guys there, and Brian Massey was a backup. Now, there was a thought that he was ultimately going to stay and hang around for his final season at SMU, play in a little bit of a reserve role, uh, a backup role, if you will. And the coaches were, you know, pretty excited about having a guy that 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 is that experienced being around for the 2024 season but ultimately he's going to go find a new spot for his final year he's graduated he's given a lot I mean I think he's one of those players that you kind of look back on and you say well what if he got injured with that ankle sprain before his 2022 season he was having the best fall camp out of anyone and unfortunately from there, he really wasn't the same. And you, you saw others emerge. You saw other players be brought in for last season. And all of a sudden, Brian Massey was just, you know, in a reserve role and, and he lost his kickoff duties, kickoff return duties as, as well. So I, I feel for him in terms of how it all played out. He really looked like he was going to end up being one of the stars, quite honestly, a true game changer in the return game at the very least. And if he'd figure out how to to tackle consistently. He was going to be a, a difference maker at safety, but it wasn't meant to be at SMU. He's going to look for a fresh start for his final year of eligibility. So SMU sits by my count right now, 79 scholarships. I could be off somewhere, but by the time everybody gets in, like a Blake Burris, the summer arrives, the, the guys arrive on campus uh, this summer, they will be at 79 scholarships from my math work. And, and also this is, these are guys that came to SMU on scholarship. So I don't have them in there. Uh, you know, if Carter Campbell was was awarded a scholarship, uh, you know, the wide receiver, former walk-on, I don't know where they're at with some of the walk-ons. So that's where my number comes from. I'm at 79 right now. And we'll be keeping an eye on to see how SMU addresses the, the roster for the 2024 season. Now, what to expect in the transfer portal window? It opens Tuesday. It runs until April 30th. This is the window where guys can enter if they're not graduate transfers. So Brian Massey, he entered. Jaden Jones announced his intention to enter on Sunday. So we'll have this window where players enter the coaching staff, quite honestly, 
this is, coincides with the recruiting window opening up for coaches to go out on the road. And SMU is going to spend a lot of that, quite honestly, babysitting their roster. When you look up and down that roster, SMU at certain spots in particular, they really can't afford to lose anyone. And so Rhett Lashley, his staff, they're going to be keeping a close eye on positions and players and checking in with them and making sure, hey, you're not getting thrown a bag, right? You're not going to enter the portal. We need you. Talk to us. Let's let's make sure everything's cool and, and this roster stays intact because they feel like they can make some noise in year one of the ACC. Quarterback, very important that they keep Preston Stone and Kevin Jennings. Haven't heard anything as of now. That leads me to believe we're going to see some fireworks at that position. But everybody in the country, for the most part, is looking to upgrade their quarterback room. And SMU's hoping to keep theirs intact because they have a very good situation uh, long term, uh, not only in the in the current present state of it, but they have a a path uh, forward where there's a line of succession, there's talent, there's competition as well. So that's probably the room that you're sitting here entering this window and you're saying, OK, got to hang tight here and make sure everybody's OK. You know, make sure Kevin knows that he's got opportunities. He's going to need to be counted on at some point. Again, Preston, hey, Kevin, he did his thing at the end of the season. He's going to continue to compete with you. But, you know, you're good. You're you're maybe not promising the starting job, but you're saying, hey, you're you're in good shape. You came on at the end of spring and got cleared and ready to go. So um, up and down this roster, though, uh, there are position groups that are deep. There are position groups that they really can't afford to lose anyone. I look at the offensive tackle spot. They really can't afford to lose anyone else. They already lost Mark, Marcus Bryant. And just really before we recorded this podcast, Anthony Crease, who committed to SMU out of junior college, Navarro College, has flipped to Kentucky. And this is a big deal because SMU was hoping to get him on board and go out and grab an offensive tackle from the transfer portal. And he flips to Kentucky. That leaves kind of um, an even bigger hole in terms of really needing to address that position because you've got Savion Bird as your right tackle. You've got P.J. Williams as your left tackle. But then from there, you have Caleb Johnson. You have Sean Scott. And other than that, you really need to, to bring in somebody who can – make you feel good about that position for this season in terms of having the depth and talent to succeed through injuries and not completely fall off and need to maybe reshuffle that offensive line one through five if somebody was to get injured. So uh, they have to keep their offensive line group intact. Uh, they, they obviously, you know, lose Branson Hickman as well, but we'll talk a lot about, the offense, the defense in terms of, all right, where's the starting lineup? Where where do things look like they're going to be as of now coming out of spring? We'll do that on a later pod. But then you look um, at the the defensive line spot too. SB can't lose anyone there. They've invested in this group. They've invested in making it ACC ready, and they can't lose anyone. And the same goes uh, for, quite honestly, the cornerback room. That room has to add talent. And I think when you look at adding talent, you look at the trenches. SMU is always going to kick the tires on offense tackles, interior offense linemen, defensive tackles, and then honestly, corner. And SMU has done a really nice job of building up this defensive line group. And they have depth and they have competition. They have guys that fit different roles. But at the end of the day, you need to add another defense tackle. If you can, that can help you for that First year of the ACC, continue to rotate guys in. I think they're fine, obviously, at edge rusher. They're making sure they're retaining guys like Turbo, who's Isaiah Smith and Cam Robertson. And, and of course, they brought in Jafar I. Harvey. They need to keep that group together. Um, but there's a lot of kind of talk about adding another defensive tackle for depth, for depth purposes. But when I look at probably the most pressing needs – one on offense, one on defense. I look at the offensive tackle spot and I say SMU's got to go get somebody, especially now that Anthony Kreese has flipped to Kentucky. And who, who are they going to go get? That secret is exactly that, a secret. I tell you what, I've tried to dig around and say, oh, is there somebody in the portal? Is there, 
you know, any anyone that, you know, kind of catches your eye that you know, could enter, haven't gotten anywhere. So if SMU is going to go out and get an offensive tackle, they might have one on the hook that they feel pretty good about. And again, it is a wild, wild west situation in the transfer portal right now. Collectives can talk to players directly right now, even when they're not in the portal. So it truly is free agency, despite players being on rosters and not free to go anywhere else at all times throughout the fall so or the spring. So SMU working the back channels, I'm sure, the collectives at least, just like every school in the country is at this point, to try and find an offensive tackle. The other spot that needs to be addressed is the cornerback room. And you brought in Deuce Harmon, the Texas A&M transfer this spring. And I feel like when I look at Deuce, he isn't Charles Woods. You know, he's not that tall, long corner that looks like a true lockdown corner. He almost looks more like a nickel. But he's got that SEC experience. They want to see him take the next step in terms of buying into what they want to do defensively and doing it day in, day out, understanding what they ask of him on and off the field. And it's an adjustment. And, and people say, well, Texas a and yeah. Did you see Jimbo Fisher's program the last however many years? It was absolutely as close to anarchy as you can have in college football. They took some bad eggs in their roster management that got arrested, got in trouble. The players very much were in a pretty cush situation in terms of being able to do what they wanted. And so when you come to a program, especially Scott Simon's defense, that is built on hard work and competition. And Rhett Lashley has done a great job of fostering this throughout the entire team. It is going to be an adjustment. And Deuce has always been the guy. He was the guy at Denton Geyer. He was one of the top prospects in the country. Signed with Texas A&M. Goes on to start for the Aggies at various points throughout his career. Now he's at SMU, which is, hey, we've got Jahari Rogers, Jalen Davis Robinson, A.J. Davis, We've seen a lot of players come into this program and work really hard at the cornerback spot. And now with Teddy Knox's legal issues with the Rasheed Rice crash situation, they absolutely need to bring in a, a corner here. And they need somebody that maybe could be, honestly, a one-year guy. Once again, they're going to have to go find that maybe a Chris Meganson that can help this team in 2024 because – you have a group that is pretty competitive, Jalen Davis Robinson, A.J. Davis, Jahari Rogers, Deuce Harmon, but you haven't seen somebody take that next step to being the guy. And so I think it's something that absolutely needs to be prioritized. Ricky Hunley is going to do just that. And then this summer you bring in Alex Rogers and Speedy Nettles and you see if they can factor in early on as well. So the cornerback room is an important one. And then I wonder if SMU is going to go get a one-year, excuse me, a, a safety that is early in his college career, maybe has one year of eligibility already under his belt and is looking to come back home or get a fresh start. And maybe they go address that position as well. Because as you go through the college football season, and we saw this, Charles Woods got nicked up last year. You know, Chris Meganson here and there, but he was pretty steady and available. Still, those corners, they have difficulty holding up. I mean, they're not the biggest guys in the world. They're asked to make tough tackles, and they usually get some nick, nicks and bruises. And so you've got to find guys that can help you in that room and make you better as well. So the transfer portal is certainly coming, and it will be something where SMU has to address their holes in the roster. And I think for me, when I look at this team coming off of the spring, I, I feel like we're talking about the same, the same positions, you know, for the most part that SMU was going to address even before the spring began, you know, now granted Marcus Bryant and Brinks Hickman had left right before the spring. So we knew, Hey, they needed to bring in somebody on the offensive line, but even before those guys left, you knew that SMU was going to address the offensive line position. You knew that they were probably going to look for another corner. You knew that they were going to look for defensive tackles because that's at this point what SMU does. <laughs> they look for the beef up the middle uh, at that defensive tackle spot. And they love to see guys that they can bring in and rotate and get reps in and, and keep guys fresh. Blake Burris will arrive this summer, but 
point taken. This is a this is a group that still needs to be addressed. If they can't, they don't want to you know bring in somebody who has got three years left that is just going to be a a dead weight on the roster. They're going to look for somebody that can help them early on and often as they make this transition to the ACC. Now, since we last talked, SMU did pick up a transfer commitment, and that is Matthew Hibner from Michigan, a national champion with the Wolverines and a guy who has two years of eligibility remaining. Matthew Hibner will join the program as that really that blocking tight end that Casey Woods has been looking for in that room. And with Matthew Hibner, uh, he's somebody that has won a national championship, kind of similar to Owen Condon back when SMU brought him in in that sense, um, because they were able to, to, to bring him in. And, um, you know, he had that national championship experience from Georgia. Hibner never started on offense for the Wolverines, but he did win three Big Ten titles as well as that national championship this past year. He didn't play as a true freshman in 2020. He's got two career receptions for 15 yards, but he's also been a key special teamer. And let me tell you, I've talked about him in the past on this podcast, but I thought he was an offensive tackle when I saw him out at practice for SMU when he was taking his visit. And he will have two years of eligibility. He was able to redshirt this season as the Wolverines went on their run to the national championship and winning it and still played in seven games. But what happened was, and I talked with Matthew, the full story is uh, going to be dropped at on the Pony Express this week. He hurt his hamstring in fall camp and he missed the first game of the season and then got back and he was playing through it, playing through it, and it just wasn't getting better. And so he went into compliance and, and said, hey, do I have a redshirt opportunity? Because I'd like to keep playing college football, but can I redshirt and can we let this heal? And then I can help the team in the postseason. And he went to the coaching staff and they said, absolutely. Sounds great. And if you watch the Alabama game, he made a big tackle uh, down on special teams and his teammates were pumped for him. And I got the sense of talking with him, very mature young man, wants to come in and, and do two years at SMU, being that blocking tight end role, maybe get some opportunities to catch the ball uh, working behind RJ Maryland and, and probably Adam Moore in terms of pass catching options for SMU. But he adds size and he is not somebody that I feel like is a projection at this standpoint. Like when SMU ultimately brought in Micah Hiltz, it was okay, wow, this guy is supposed to be, you know, depth. I personally thought he was going to be bigger than he was, but he was really kind of lanky. Matthew Hibner is really what Casey Woods has been looking for at the tight end room. Maryland, Kentucky, NC State, and others offered him as well. And so you bring him in. He's going to help you on special teams. He's going to be a veteran about just about every way he works. And, and I think that's important is you don't want to bring in somebody who's going to rock the boat or be an issue. And I think he fits exactly what Casey Woods wanted, which is a blocking tight end. If they can get some receptions out of him, great. You know he knows how to play all over the field as a tight end because that's what Michigan does. They play in 12 personnel. They play in 13 personnel. They move their tight ends all over the field. That's what SMU has been able to do at times with their tight ends as well. And if they can get someone who's not a full-blown H-back, like when they have Stone Eby or Elijah Chapman out there at times in the past, which is declaring, hey, we're probably going to run the football. This helps your offense just a teeny bit. I'm not sitting here saying he's going to be an all-conference. I'm not sitting here saying he's going to even catch a pass this year. But if he can come in and be a solid blocker and he can be physical at the point of attack, remember, leaving Michigan, won a national championship there in a loaded tight end room, he's going to have a chance to make a positive impact on this team, and he'll have two years to do it as well. So Matthew Hibner – did commit to the Mustangs while we were on that little bit of a break, too. So when it comes to the transfer portal, again, I have SMU, and actually I might be at 80 now that, I, now that I think about that. Yep, I have not added Matthew Hibner. So Matthew is now on the roster on my scholarship board. So SMU is at 80 now, and they'll have five spots to play with by my count, and that's before we've seen anyone enter 
the, the portal or anyone else enter the portal from SMU. Now, some people will say, all right, when is, when are we going to, what are we going to expect here from SMU? And I think what Rhett Lashley and his staff have built is a roster that they want to be very careful with. And they have to be very careful because they've positioned this culture to be a very strong one. And I think we've seen that even as they've, you know, lost some key guys, they lose Elijah Chapman on defense. They lose some of those offensive linemen. They're going to be a different team than they were in 2023. Obviously they're taking a huge step up as well, but what this team goes about well is, is work. And they have an ability to focus on what they need to do day in, day out. And that's because if you look at this roster, 22 guys going into their final year of eligibility by my count. That's a lot. And how do they welcome in players this summer that haven't been around the culture? And maybe if they're brought in to be a very competitive offensive tackle battle or a very competitive cornerback room battle, how do they mesh with their teammates? And that's something that's very important with Rhett Lashley and his staff. If you look up and down this roster, and this isn't to disparage others, but it's just a reality now, there really haven't been as many guys that you look at and you say, oh, that's a bad egg, that's a bad egg, that's a bad egg. I think they've gotten away from some of those guys that when you went out to practice, you knew that guy's just not doing anything. He's hurt, he's you know hurt in quotations or whatever. They've done a nice job of fixing this roster to make it competitive top to bottom. I really believe that. And, you know, there are guys that aren't going to play and there are guys that are ultimately going to transfer. And there are guys that um, have really earned the opportunity to play a lot and be the starters and all those things. It's any football team. But you look at this roster now and there are very few guys that you sit there and look at and you say, wow, that guy is really a, a true dead weight, not giving it this and that on this roster. And so the important thing is to make sure you don't bring in somebody who's really going to muddy the waters in certain position rooms or really quite honestly, all the position rooms. So that's going to be important as they go through this. What will happen is, is the transfer portal window will, will open. I think we'll start to see some guys maybe start taking visits later this month. SMU is done with spring ball, so they can do all this. They can go out and recruit them if they want to. Um, in terms of the coaches getting on, out on the road, they can do all these things. But this is something that probably over the next uh, couple weeks to a month, that's where we'll start to see commitments. That's when we'll start to see decisions being made and things like that. And, and the board emerge, you know, Andrew Chambly is an Arkansas transfer who's an SEC uh, all freshman selection a couple years ago and, and is getting a lot of buzz in the transfer portal. Well, SMU is one of the teams that, of course, is going to be linked to him because uh, he's an offense tackle and he's young and he's got opportunities to be uh, a really good one long term. He's expected to visit Colorado, Kansas State, UCLA, Virginia Tech. SMU is interested in him. He started eight games in 2023. And at the end of the day, he moved on and was going to just turn to um, life away from football but decided to re-engage with football here over the course of the spring. And so now he's in the portal and he's one of the top available offensive linemen. Doesn't necessarily mean SMU is going to bring him in for a visit. Again, they have to really evaluate the fit and make sure things will play out well. So hope that gives you guys a good idea of the transfer portal window and kind of what to expect uh, we will have a ton of coverage on this, of course, at OnThePonyExpress.com. A lot of recruiting news to go through. We'll have a recruiting pod later this week as well. Um, SMU continues to assemble one of the top classes in the country. They rank in the top 25 in the class of 2025, so a lot to talk about there. Um, but before we go, guys, i got to remind you guys about our friends at StatusJet. StatusJet.com. They have so many opportunities for you to go to some luxury destinations. And we're going to talk about all those opportunities for you guys to take the trip of a lifetime with status yet. Use code PONYUPACC 
for a discount on your round trip. Remind them that you heard about them from OnThePonyExpress.com. David Henry and his entire team work with you step by step to make sure you have an incredible experience at Status Jet. They are not just about flights. They're about crafting your perfect airborne experience, ensuring you arrive inspired and ready to pursue whatever it is on that trip that you want to and leave you smiling and saying, hey, that was a great decision to do that. Let's do it again soon. So reach out to our friends at Status Jet. Go to statusjet.com for more information. And also go to ontheponyexpress.com. Use code SMU1, that's SMU the number one, for two months for just a dollar. That's a special code for all of you guys that listen to our podcast. Check it out. Try the site. This is the time of year. Bat, between basketball and football transfer portal news, this is the time to be on the site. So hope you guys who have taken advantage of it, have enjoy, enjoyed it. Uh, the site has grown a ton with the, the change from Rob Lanier to Andy Enfield. So really appreciate all you guys who have joined us for that. And as always, you can reach out to me on the site, ask any questions. We'll be back, though, hoping to go five for five this week. Hope you guys like the new setup as well uh, for the podcast drop back uh, backdrop. We're going to be maybe toying with a little bit more. But for now, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this edition of the On the Pony Express podcast. We will catch you guys later this week with another edition. Thanks for listening. Have a good one. Thanks for listening to the On the Pony Express podcast with Billy Embody. Follow us on your socials on X at SMU on 3 and on Instagram at on 3 SMU. And keep it locked to OnThePonyExpress.com for more coverage.